my name's Joanne Pollock. Uh, this is part of my On the Art Trail uh, with Joanne, and I'm here today with Jason Bangeter at Langdon Hall. So thank you, Jason, for agreeing to meet with me today and to spend a wonderful half hour together and talk about uh, your incredible accomplishments at Langdon Hall. Yeah, thank you. So you've got a lot of creds behind you, Jason and uh, you received the Pinnacle Award of the Year in 2017 amongst a whole bunch of other things. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, Jason as the chef and Jason as the person. Sure. But let's start with Jason as the chef. Um, and you have been at Langdon Hall for seven years. Yeah. And so you have built some incredible relationships with community, farmers, foragers, and artisans as the executive chef at Langdon Hall. Yeah. Can you tell us how you've managed to do that? Well, you know, it's it's been a, a long journey um, that uh, building relationships with farmers uh, can be challenging because they are like an artist. Their mind is, is focused on one thing and they really don't have time for anything else. Um, and uh, just like any relationship, relationships take time to nurture and to mm -hmm. build. And um, I was really fortunate when I first came to Langdon Hall, uh, because I was kind of the new kid on the block and, and the farmers were already here, uh, a lot of them came to visit me very early in my days at Langdon Hall and would come with baskets. They'd fill the back of their trucks and roll in with, with livestock and vegetables oh, and, 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 uh, and eggs and game birds and honey and all mm. sorts of wonderful things. And mm. uh, it was quite, to be quite honest, it was a little overwhelming at first. Mm. Uh, because I'd only ever seen any type of um, relationship start like this or any type of supplier uh, come to a restaurant like this when I was in Europe. So I was really overjoyed and, uh, and that was amazing because it took me some time to build relationships in Toronto when I was a chef in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And especially being a new chef, um, it, it took a lot of time and, and to learn that, it also took time to learn that, you know, it's not like today where you know, mentors and chefs are talking about how important it is to support local and, and training their cooks about, you know, using their community's products. Um, I didn't have that type of training wow. when I was coming up as a, mm. as a young cook 20 years ago. Mm. Mm. Uh, so it took time to build those relationships. And when I left Toronto and came here, a lot of my suppliers in Toronto weren't going to deliver here. Mm -hmm. It was too far out of their, their, their region. Mm -hmm. So I was a little concerned. But uh, with the overwhelming uh, support of the local farmers here and their energy, you know, a lot of them would come in with these baskets and say, is this good enough to serve at Langdon Hall? Wow. And some of their ingredients, quite wow. honestly, were some of the nicest and best quality I'd seen anywhere in my travels. Oh my gosh. And uh, so I was really excited. And, and, I, and really, to build those relationships, it, it had to go a step further. I had to, I had to go to those, the farms. I wanted to really get to know the farmers, uh, to connect with them. Um, and it got to the point where a lot of these farmers, I'm, we're, we're friends, we're not, it's not just a business relationship now. And, uh, and I can get them to, to grow specific things for me or change the feed for the livestock to really fine tune uh, the ingredients to the, to the products that, I, that I'm excited to use. And that's why now you've become almost the best chef in Canada or perhaps the best chef Well, in you know, the ingredients are important. <clears throat> they're, they're definitely important. <laughs> it starts important. with the ingredients. It yeah. starts with the ingredients. And it's kind of cool that um, now you have people coming to you, Jason, and bringing their wares and, and you know, presenting that to you. So that's really a wonderful thing. Yeah, no, right? it's, it has been. It has really been uh, rewarding mm. wow. um, and exciting as a chef to be able to be so close to the ingredients as well. What is foraging all about? Well, I think, you know, foraging is, goes back to the back of the beginning of time. You know, you're foraging for food, you're foraging for edibles. Uh, and we're lucky enough at Langdon Hall to have 75 acres right. and be sitting in this beautiful strip of Carolinian forest mm -hmm. uh, that has really rich soil and wonderful terroir. And, uh, and you name the wild ingredient, it grows here. So, mm -hmm. you know, quite often you'll see cooks out uh, on the grounds collecting mushrooms or berries or even just lettuce leaves. Um, and uh, we're able to use that in the, in the menus and, and give the people a real true taste of this, of this land. You know, on top of that, we also have our culinary garden, which is filled with everything you can think of. So uh, when building menus uh, at Langdon Hall and kind of doing the, the, whole, the whole process of creating, the cooks here are basically are foraging daily. 
whether awesome. it's going to the garden or it's going to the creek or it's yeah. going to the, the edge of the forest um, or to the greenhouse. Uh, you know, we're, we're always, uh, it's, a, it's a part of their daily routine. And that must be a thrill for a chef to be able to do that. Oh, it's, inc it's, uh, right? it's incredible. You know, yeah, yeah, in the city incredible. you just can't, you know, walk across no. the street and go and pick some beautiful blueberries. No, I think, I think I'm at the point now, <laughs> seven years into it, that you might even say you take it for granted sometimes. You know, but when I was in the city, uh, you know, you had to find a forager. You had to find a forager. And it's not like I came here knowing everything either. You know, it, it was a good couple of years of learning, sure. working with foragers, working with, um, you know, people in the area that were professionals uh, and really understanding the land. And, and even then, you have to, you have to, you, some of these things I had to chase because, just to give you an example, there's this one plant called a trout lily. And hmm. it comes up in the, in the spring and it's this beautiful, it's almost like an arrowhead leaf hmm. and it, it spotted like a trout hmm. and it's gorgeous and I saw this thing and I learned about it and I ate it and it was very fresh and green and I got so excited and I'm going to do this trout dish and I'm going to use trout lilies and and three or four days later I went back to pick them all and they had a whole the, the spots were gone and the flower had bloomed uh. and so I was like oh so I was constantly taking notes and how long does this is it in this stage uh -huh. and, and it really it really was interesting I, I would say the first the first year uh, of working at Langdon Hall, I was I was so educated in gardening and foraging and the plants. Um, that that was a really big learning uh, experience. For and me. a good one. An amazing one because it has completely changed the way I cook. Right. That's why you're that's why yeah. you're still here at Langdon Hall doing good things. Yeah. Um, Langdon Hall was recently ranked number fifty seven in the world's top one hundred restaurants in the world for an international award called the Smart Green Guide Award. Yes. This is the first time a Canadian restaurant has been included in the top 100. What is it about this award um, that you are proud of and why is it so important to you personally? Yeah, well, I think, I think a big part of it for what I've just all said, you know, to have a, a cuisine focused on the land and what we grow on property and what's coming from our local farms at the best quality um, to be recognized, I mean, to be recognized nationally is pretty awesome. Uh, and I think we've done a great job making noise here in Canada. But when you get recognized um, internationally, it really, I think it really has a tr is a tribute to the hard work of everyone here and, and the noise that we're making, uh, not only nationally, but around the world. You know, we have some really sophisticated diners that are coming here. That list was a surprise. Um, I wasn't even, I didn't even know that it exists, but it, apparently it comes out of Belgium and it's, uh, it is the same panelists that um, that vote for the World 50 Best or the, the San Pellegrino list of 100 best restaurants. But the focus on this is the restaurants that are celebrating and, and championing the vegetable and the fruit. And their whole their whole rating system is based on you know how you use the vegetable, where you source the vegetable, um, the creativity, uh, the the showcasing of it in the restaurant, and how it, the message is. is pervade from the restaurant to the guest. Uh, and really, I think what their goal is, is to, is to have a focus on vegetable cuisine and just to help uh, promote and provide for community, support community, work together with your community, and uh, essentially have better healthy lifestyles and a better planet. On that happy note, we're going to take a short break, Jason, and we're going to be right back. Welcome back. I'm here with um, Jason Bangerter at Langdon Hall. He's the executive chef. Um, I want to just touch on something that is important to me personally, and that is the aspect of art uh, and how you as a chef are translating the vision in your head, the artistic vision in your head, and putting it onto a plate. So not only do you as a chef have to um, have people appreciate the look on a plate, mm. they also have to appreciate the taste on a plate. So in fact, you have a double challenge. Mm. Do you see some uh, similarities between the artistic vision and what you're doing every day? Yeah. The taste for me is always number one. I, I, think, I think some chefs get confused where, mm. you know, they'll, it's all for them, it's all about, can I take a picture of this and post it on Instagram mm -hmm. yep. or, or yep. you know, the, the focus is on the design and, and, the, and the, the flavor, the, 
the dining experience has to has to be equally, if not m better, than that plate presentation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, there's a huge. I mean, I I was an artist in school. I loved I loved drawing. I've always been kind of interested in music and 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 the arts and and uh, and I never really connected it to cooking until I started having to design plates. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when I got into that, I was I was drawn to it. I loved mm -hmm. it. Um, and I and I feel like even like a young artist, you know, you, what, you, what you what you how you start off and the things that you create and you prepare to you know twenty years down the road once you gain maturity and, and experience, you know that art really develops and changes. And I see that I see that in in the cuisine every time I make a plate, and it's it's so funny. Um, I, I, there was a there was a moment where I was cleaning out my office at home uh, a little while while back, and I found images of my my first chef, head chef job of plates that I had built, and I had a little chuckle, you know, because it was everything that worked, but it was everything that worked, all every everything, and it's really for me it's exciting too to be able to do something that is just so peeled back now. You know, where it's just the ingredient, and it doesn't have to be all sorts of other things and other colors, but really showcase the beauty of that one thing. Um, but for sure, when I make a plate, I, it, it, I, I do. I it think I do art. try to make it pretty. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. So, Jason, you've done some incredibly creative things um, in and out of Langdon Hall, and I can think of one uh, thing that I was involved with where we had a very beautiful art show here mm. last summer and uh, the art was um, geometric and beautiful and we yeah. asked you to uh, translate the art into uh, some beautiful uh, dishes. Yes. And you translated that experience very beautifully. First of all, were you keen to, to do that or? Yeah. Yes, I, oh my gosh. Uh, I love creating. Mm -hmm. I think when I'm challenged mm -hmm. by someone saying create inspired by this, mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy it more. I get I, because because then you kind of have a vision. Mm -hmm. When I'm creating and just and just creating, I'm kind of pulling, and then the the, the inspiration develops um, for the dish based on what the, the steps I take. Whereas if 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 you were to say to me, um, here's a painting, design a dish. I have I have inspiration, right? Then it's just pulling things together. It's going into that file and saying, okay, this, 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 this boom. I love uh, like that was a very fun and interesting project. But like even for someone to say to me, here, I want a dish, but I just I want a menu, but I want everything white. Right? Again, you start thinking about all the things, all the all the ingredients that are white. And then how do I get shades and textures and this and then and have them all taste different? You know, it's it's. That's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I would have thought that it would have been the exact opposite. Well, for some, for some chefs, it is. Right. For sure. I would have thought that somebody hands you a piece of abstract art and says, "Design something from this," mm -hmm. and um, the the piece of art that you had to work with was very structured. Yeah. It was it was very geometric, and so uh, maybe that's your style. Is to. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> the, the dish design was nothing like I'd ever made before. Wow. It was yeah. it was absolutely fantastic and yeah. maybe we have um, some examples of that around that we can show the viewers but yeah. that was truly an amazing experience. I'm I uh, it's funny you know, you know that's an interesting topic because some chefs if you say to them, "Oh, can I just even have that vegetable on this dish?" they'll say no. Right? Like there's there's some chefs that will mm -hmm. build a dish and this is the dish that's it. Um, so I think you know they're kind of this is what they do and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, when some so I, but personally I love I love a challenge. I I love when vegetarians or ve vegans come into the restaurant and they say, "There's nothing on here for me. I need something." <laughs> and it's like boom, all right, let's go. Do -do 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 -do. And we try to do the best vegan or vegetarian experience they've ever had, mm -hmm. and we often succeed. I mean, I'm we're sure lucky we do. have this beautiful garden and we have all these veg vegetable right. dishes and things uh, where we can just pull from. Um, but um, you know, quite often, uh, I've done events or dishes uh, where they have to be inspired by something that's art. Whether it's, um, you know, I, I think we had discussed once that I had a, a car company come to me and say, "Can you design a Can you design a meal based around this car?" And they gave me this car for a week. That's crazy right? and, and cool. I drew, and it, you know, it was so cool. That's and the menu cool. was so cool. I bet it was. You know, and then. Um, <laughs> 
So you did this with TIFF as well? Yes. Uh, and what film was it? Do you remember? So I was the opening chef uh, for the Toronto International Film Festival building. Right. And, uh, and with that came kind of working with the Hollywood and working with all these films and all these different art installments. And, uh, you know, it, that, was, that was really cool. You know, having Tim Burton. Tim Burton was the first exhibit. So we were making, you know, how cool is that, no right? No kidding. So that, was, that part was easy. <laughs> uh, but then I said, you know, let's do something with the film. It's not just about the art. And, uh, and so we developed um, this thing called Food on Film. And how it worked was we selected seven or eight food films. And I think I started with the classics. And, uh, and what we would do was I would invite a guest. So if it was a film on sustainability um, or a documentary on sustainability, it would be Dr. David Suzuki or it would be my friend Chef Ned Bell from the West Coast and would be, they would come. And, and how we would launch this was we would, I would introduce the guest we, on the stage in front of the screen, in front of uh, all the guests, and we would talk about the film, we'd watch it, and then after we'd do a half hour Q&A, we talk about life experiences, whether uh, being a chef or someone who's in the sustainability industry. Um, and, uh, and then we would welcome everybody back to the restaurant and they would have something that would be inspired by the film. Mm, cool. So, you know, just to give an example, like we, I, had, I did a Big Night, right? Yep. Which is the Italian brothers who I opened the restaurant, that. right? Yep. Uh, which was so fun, mm -hmm. a great, great film. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my guest was uh, chef, uh, TV personality David Rocco from the oh, Food Network, right? Oh, cool. So we had this great banter. We talked about the film. Love and, it. and we did some beautiful Italian dishes at the end of uh, the film for everyone to come back and enjoy. And th that was a great experience. And, and it's so funny. I mean, you just, I was so busy being the chef in that building. I, I don't think I actually ever saw a film in the building. <laughs> so like, I would have to go home and do research. <laughs> I'd watch all these films and make menus and design awesome. dishes. And uh, it, was, it was fun. But, um, but that, again, was kind of that real connection with the, the food and, love it. and uh, arts. I love that. We're going to take a short break, Jason, and we're going to be back in a minute. So let's switch gears for a minute. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about um, you were on The Iron Chef in 2017. Yes. And you actually beat... Uh, um, my good friend Lynn, Lynn Crawford. Crawford. Yeah, <laughs> Lynn Crawford. Uh, and I got you, lucky that day. Did you? Yeah. Why do you say that? Because <laughs> we're equally as good. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, you cooked a venison dish. Yes. And um, so, what was your experience like? Because it always looks so stressful to to see you guys under so much pressure and trying to pull it out of the bag. Well, you know that's that is. Um, it's that's not it. For someone who doesn't cook, yes, that is stressful. But that's what we do every single day. So I can see how it might not look stressful. Uh, the stressful part of that is the, is, the, is the timeline. It's the unknown. It's the one hour only. Mm. And I'll tell you, that show is legit. Like, mm. like the bell starts, you get the ingredient, and there's no, there's no go to break, restock. <laughs> like, it's like, there's no retakes. that bell goes, you're done. <laughs> you have to hit those targets. Um, it, it was, it, you know, when I was an apprentice and I was a young cook, I was fascinated by the original Iron Chef series that came out of <laughs> Japan. <laughs> and I would rush home after my shift and sit, you know, order a pizza and open a, a bottle of wine and sit and watch Iron Chef at like one in the morning before I went to bed to get ready and then go to, you know, to work the next day. Uh, and I thought that was the coolest show. I was so intrigued by the professionalism of the chefs and um, the skill level and the action and you know that that kind of romance of that real that hustle in the kitchen, and then they always had beautiful plates at the end. Uh, so I was really it was the first show to me as a cooking show that I saw as being okay. This is a real chef show. This is real, right? And you're a part of it now. Yeah, you're and on. It, it was fun, you know. When, when we got when we got invited, I wasn't uh, I was excited about it. Uh, I was more excited about it for my team. I really wanted them to experience um, the pressure of competition. And to be a part of something. So and so the whole time, I know I, I said to the guys, it doesn't matter if we win or not, guys. This is like this is an experience for us. It was such a great uh, bonding experience. We had to practice. We practiced several times in this kitchen right here. You know, I would say, okay, here's the secret ingredient. This is what we're gonna do. Ba 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 ba. And then we would just go. We'd set the timer, and let me tell you, the first couple of times it was a bit of a disaster. But uh, you know, we got it all together, and and we we figured it out, and and we were successful. You did. We had a great time. Yeah, we had a really great time. 
And Jason, in any profession, there um, it's very important to mentor younger people that are going to be following you. And I know that you have done that a lot uh, in your career. Can you just tell us a little bit about how you have mentored students? You're mentoring mm -hmm. students in, or you're mentoring people in your own kitchen every day. Every yeah. day, but you're doing other things outside of Langdon Hall. Yes, I, you know, this in this industry. Um, I mean, in the industry, really, especially the trades, the mentorship is is key to the success mm -hmm, of the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, I've always, uh, I've always been very proud and um, involved in creating an environment where people can learn and 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 really sh helping them, you know, see the things that I see and, and what I've learned. And sometimes maybe I'm a little bit too much of a of a maybe I'm an aggressive mentor sometimes because I expect them to get it real quick mm. <laughs> where it's taken me years and years and years to get mm. to where it is what I'm mentoring um, but I, I really feel like and as I, we touched on earlier having the ability to show and teach in all elements of what we do here at the hotel has really um, made it that type of environment for learning uh, and I think outside of the hotel you know I've been really fortunate to my, fir my first mentor uh, is the, the head of George Brown College in Toronto Culinary mm -hmm. School, so I get a, a great opportunity. My wife uh, is in uh, the Halton School Board here. You know, I get a great opportunity to speak to a lot of students. Uh, I go to the colleges. I speak to culinary students uh, once in a while. I'll try to do a class if I can get a class in. I do a little promotion. Uh, we often invite students here to the hotel for our tour, for demonstrations, and at all levels. Um, from college to grade school uh, to high school level, you know, I've 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 done things like go into uh, careers classes and talk awesome. about you know what if kids are, are at an age where they're trying to decide what they want to do, I'll go and speak about the hospitality in industry about yep. being a chef. Um, I even uh, one of the local schools close to my home, uh, they started a, a a community garden at the school. So I worked closely with the teacher there to develop awesome. this garden and to and to then uh, harvest and teach the kids about making sauce and pickles and, and canning and things like that and, and you know trying to get uh, and it's interesting you know because you don't know how much impact you'll have on oh. on these kids but you have a, you, you end up having a lot of impact on these kids and Absolutely. it's quite uh, it is quite rewarding when they come back to you a year or two later or, or you hear from their parents and or they come back they follow you to the next restaurant to, you know to let you know what they've been up to. Um, it's awesome. pretty exciting, uh, and then Iron, the Iron Chef opportunity has been really good too because it's it you know the kids connect with that they mm -hmm. connect with the TV yeah so I've had an opportunity to go and, and watch the episode in some classrooms with kids especially special needs kids or at risk kids uh, that uh, that need some motivation and, and uh, or even just you know do a little bit of cooking demonstrations with them as well simple things they can do at home uh, so there's always kind of that. Uh, that element we're trying to give back to the community a little bit and help help kids with food and with the industry and 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 you are and thank you for doing that by the way yeah. you're about to publish your first cookbook mm -hmm. um, Jason and when will that be released so we've captured the art awesome we have captured it beautiful it is the first time we have something that doesn't get eaten and you have to start over again it's, Good. it's printed and uh, and this is this has been uh, a project we've been working on uh, for two years. Um, we're, we're still in the process of developing uh, the lay layout of it now, and it will probably come out in uh, 2021 in the fall, uh, just before Christmas, I imagine. Uh, and, and it will be on the bestseller list. I hope. We hope. <laughs> we hope. I'm sure. But uh, it has been such a rewarding and exciting experience for all of us here at Langen Hall. Um, it. Um, it was it was a real difficult thing to to get grasp in the beginning. You know, it's it's okay. Well, we're writing a book. What does it is it going to be a little bit of everything? Is it afternoon tea? Is it breakfast? Is it lunch? Is it is it all this? Is it is it is it my early days of the first dishes I ever created? You know, what does it become? And uh, and I ended up speaking to a lot of mentors and, and colleagues um, that have that have cookbooks. And, and told them, you know, how, how, how did you start? What was the inspiration? What did you, what was your focus? Because it's not like a bread book or a bakery book. This is a Langdon Hall book. It's everything. It's mm -hmm. got so much going mm -hmm. on. And uh, one chef said to me, um, you know, do what you're doing right now. Just shoot you now. What's, what's that Langdon Hall now? And I, and I said, that's 
brilliant. It, is it that simple? And it was, you know, we, we, we realized that that, well, I realized we had to do it at, at the hotel. We had to shoot the book at the hotel because I'm just far too busy to be able to do something outside and bring all the ingredients and prepare something in a studio. I said, this is what we'll do. We'll, let's have a photographer team come here, a, a stylist team come here. Uh, we'll spend three or four days every season and we'll just shoot what's on the menu. Awesome. Recipes are here, preps here, uh, and we really created something beautiful. I'm sure you did. Yeah. And you create a lot of things that are beautiful, Jason. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for spending time with me this afternoon. And um, I wish you every success and every award that you can possibly <laughs> go after in Canada and internationally. So thank you for sharing with me thank today. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thanks.